Hello guys, welcome to Deep Codes and in today's video we will discuss Red Code Question 1964 that says find the longest valid obstacle course at each position. So guys this question is although difficult to understand, the given problem description is also very much difficult but overall the question is easy if you start looking at the test cases. So yeah guys, in today's video we will build the approach intuitively and solve this question. So yeah, make sure you watch the video till the end, and like and subscribe to our channel. Now here. In the problem statement, you are told that you will be given the zero index integer at an obstacle of a length n, where obstacle of i describes the height of the ith obstacle. And for each index start, uh, i starting from 0 to n minus 1 inclusive, we need to find the longest obstacle course in obstacle uh, array such that. So, yeah, for each index, we need to find longest obstacle course, okay, and that must satisfy this condition. So uh, the condition states that we can choose any number of obstacles between 0 to i inclusive. Further, the ith obstacle must be included and you must put the chosen obstacle in the same order as they appear in the input. Right? You can select the obstacles in the same order as they appear in the in input array obstacles. Further, each obstacle except the first is taller or the same height as the obstacle immediate before it. So this line state that if you choose an obstacle i, so let's say if you choose an obstacle i, then the immediate before obstacle must, uh, that is let's say i minus 1, this length must be less than equal to the obstacle uh, uh, i. If this height of the i minus 1 obstacle, it must be less than equal to the height of ith obstacle. So that means uh, every obstacle is taller than or of same height than the obstacle before it. So that means the height of the ith obstacle must be greater than equal to height of i minus 1. This is the same. These both things are same. So this is what the fourth point states. Now at the end we need to return the answer variable of a length n where answer of i is nothing but the length of longest obstacle for that index i. Now let's take a look at the test cases or the examples for better understanding. So focusing on the zeroth index, focusing on the zeroth index, uh, there is only one obstacle we can take that is the obstacle itself. Okay, so total obstacles here are only one. So yeah, our length uh, of this course is one. Now for index i equal to one, we can take obstacle at the zeroth index as well as obstacle at the index one. Why we can take obstacle at zeroth index? Because its height is one and one is less than equal to the current height that is two. So yeah, we can take both the obstacles and the total length is 2. Now for i equals to 2, the previous obstacle that is a height 1, height 2, they both are less than equal to the current obstacle height that is 3. So yeah, we can take all the three obstacles. But now if you look at the index 3, so here we cannot take this 3 obstacle at index 2. We cannot take this because its height is greater than the current obstacle. See guys, we always have to include the current obstacle. And the previous obstacle we can only include if the height is less than equal to the current obstacle height. If it is greater, then we cannot include that in the course, right? So yeah, that way we have to find the longest length of the course. So here it is 1, 2, 2 and it is of length 3. So got this. So after this uh, uh, example 1, I hope you have somewhat understanding of the question. Now let's uh, look at the second example. Say at index 0, we have to take the, uh, there is only one obstacle present, we take that obstacle. At index i equal to 1, the the uh, height of the second obstacle is nothing but 2 and the previous one is also 2. So we can take both, right? So we have the length is 2. Now, for index i equal to 2, there is no previous obstacle whose height is less than equal to 1. There are no obstacles with a height less than equal to 1 previously. So in this course, we can take only the one obstacle present at index 2 and that is of length 1. So yeah, that's our answer. Now if you take a look at the third test case, i is equal to 0, it's obvious that is all the would be of a length 1. For i equal to 1, see the, uh, the height of the for first index obstacle is 1 and there is no previous obstacles with a height less than equal to 1. So here also the length is 1. For i equals to 2, its height is 5. So we can take 3 and 5 or 1 and 5. We can in either take for any one of them. Since both the, the length are same, so yeah, we uh, added 2 to our answer. Now for i equals to 3, 
वी कैन टेक थ्री फाइव सिक्स और वन फाइव सिक्स दे बोथ आर वैलिड कोर्सेज एंड द लेंथ ऑफ बोल्थ द कोर्सेज सेम दैट इज थ्री सो वी आर एडेड थ्री टोर आंसर फॉर आई इक्वल टू फोर विद हाइट ऑल्सो फोर वी कैन वी कैन टेक वन एंड फोर और थ्री एंड फोर राइट सो एंड द लेंथ ऑफ बोथ द कोर्सेज टू सो एड टू टू आवर आंसर एंड फॉर आई इक्वल टू फाइव आवर height is only 2 so we can only include one and two co uh, obstacles in the current course we cannot include any others so yeah the course of the current uh, index that is index y is 2 so yeah we added 2 to our answer so guys we are just doing here that we are checking the with the previous obstacles and we are either including or excluding them okay so if you take a look at this example more generally i will try to explain you what we are doing here so uh, let me take the index here so the index is zeroth index so you will only include one obstacles and let me take length here so and its length is one so yeah this is one to our answer now for the first index we have uh, the height 3 so we can give one 3 so guys what we are doing here for each index we are trying to find lis longest increasing subsequent see let me show you for the second index it is 1 3 5 so if you find lis of uh, all this 1 3 5 it is nothing but 3 of a length 3 that is our answer here because we can include all the three elements in the longest increasing subsequence so lis is nothing but it will help us to find the length of the longest sub increasing subsequence right so we are just finding lis uh, with ending uh, integer fix or ending index fix so for this also it is 1 3 Five, five. Length is four. Now for this index four, we will include one, three, four only. We can't take five and five. Although our input has like one, three, five, five, four. But what is the alias for index for for index this? The alias is nothing but one, three, and four. So in alias is nothing but longest increasing subsequence. So we can only include the element that are uh, in increasing order as well as. They are less than equal to the last element. So this is the alias for the index four, and the length is three. So if you have some what understanding of this lit code question, longest increasing subsequence, then it is very much easy to understand this question. Because for each index, of uh, we are trying to find the alias or the length of uh, longest increasing subsequence ending at that index. So if you take now index five, uh, that is height six, then you can include one, three, five, five, six. Okay. And that is of length five, and so on. You can find the length of other uh, indexes. Okay, the course length of other indexes. So here, this is nothing but LIS at index zero, LIS at index one, two, three. Now, if you uh, for each index, if you call LIS function separately, then that will take big O of the yeah, LIS. It's it's will itself take big O of uh, not big O. It will take we yeah, have big O of n log n time complexity in the worst case. And there are n indexes or n inputs. So for uh, n times you have to call LIS. N times you have to call LIS. So that would be nothing but n square log of n. And if you look at the constraints now, and if you look at the constraints here, that are n is up till 10 to the power 5. So if you perform LIS for each index, then it will give you time limit exceeded. Time limit exceeded for a sure shot because the overall time complexity would be. Something like n square log of n. So, guys, when you have n very big, like 10 to the power 5, then at that point we can think of n log n solution only, because that is the maximum uh, time complexity solution we can take for n uh, for n equals to 10 to the power 5. This is the maximum possible solution in regards of time complexity we can perform uh, such that it won't give us TLE. So, whenever uh, there is n log n time complexity, so what uh, you can think of you can think of something like binary search. Because for n numbers you will perform binary search, then that would be n log n. Okay, so you can think of something like binary search, uh, or let's say heaps or something like that. Whenever you want to perform n log n time complexity approach. So here our task is nothing but to perform this LIS efficiently. Correct. We have to just perform the LIS efficiently. Now, if I tell you that we can use the previous answer, we can use previous. Computed answer. Now you will ask how how you will how we will use the previous answer. So let me show you. 
so here let's say I, we will try to trace again try to trace again so here for each index what we will do we will make one array alias and here is our answer we will try we will make this array alias okay for each index for the zeroth index alias is empty so yeah we uh, we inserted the height one obstacle and our answer is one now for index one our uh, now for the index one what we will do we will check for an element whose height is greater than three is there any element in alias whose height is greater than three no no such element then append the new obstacle at the end and increase your answer to two now for index two our our height is fine we will check if there is any element inside our current alias array with a height greater than 5 no then append that uh, height at the end or append that obstacle at the end and 3 is our answer now for index 3 height is 5 now is there any element in alias array with a height greater than 5 no then again add that obstacle in our alias array our answer is 4 now the situation changes in the current index 4 the height of the obstacle is also 4 and there are elements inside our alias with a height greater than 4 yeah you can see we have 5 here and that is greater than 4 now in this condition what we will do is we will replace the first index of this alias with this new element 4 so we will replace the first index element which is greater than 4 inside this alias so we have replaced this 5 we have replaced this 5 with 4 okay Got it and now the length is all uh, length is not 4 it is the 3 our length is 3 so our length is nothing but uh, the position at which we inserted the new element or updated the new element so we have updated at index 2 so our length is 3 got it okay so now if you take a look at the next index that is height 6 so index 5 now is there any element with a height greater than 6 no in that case simply insert 6 at the end right and the current length or the insert index at which we insert it is nothing but nothing but a fourth index so the answer is 5 the next element is 2 here also the situation changes because we have uh, elements or we have obstacles inside this alias with a height greater than 2 greater than this 2 so in that case what we do we replace the first occurrence of such element or for such uh, obstacle with this two so here what we did we replace this three with this two other things would remain as it is four five six and our answer would be nothing but the index at which we updated so we updated at the first index so our, our length would be two and for the last seven we will check is there any elements or obstacle inside the allies greater than seven with the height greater than seven no then insert at the end okay and the answer is nothing but six so guys what we are doing is we are maintaining the alias array that is first maintain history in alias second check check if any obstacle with a height greater than obstacle of current index current index we are checking if there any such obstacle with height greater than the current uh, index greater with the greater than the height of the current obstacle then in that case what we do is we replace first occurrence of such obstacle so let's say if uh, if the index of this obstacle is let's say x let's assume that in an index is x so inside this allies we will replace x with the current obstacle right and in the else case add new obstacle at end so by doing this we are nothing but maintaining the allies at each index that is the longest increasing subsequence at each index and since we are replacing only then this won't affect uh, if when we add a new element right so yeah guys by doing this way we will maintain the allies as well as we will get the answer for each new uh, obstacles right for each new index obstacles we don't have to uh, generate a new answer from the beginning we will use the previously computed allies array and make our answer so guys clear that what we are doing 
this is nothing but the more efficient way of doing the ls by using the history right this is the binary search approach so where the binary search uh, came here so to find any obstacle with a height greater than the current obstacle height so this step so this step is nothing but binary search so we will do this by using binary search because the LIS is itself sorted. See, this is what this is sorted, right? Because this is longest increasing subsequence. It is always increasing, right? So this is sorted, Adam. So that's why we can apply binary search here, right? So yeah, I hope you guys are now understanding of the approach part. And let's move on to the coding part here. So I initialize the end that is the size of the obstacles and then the answer Adam with a value of one because the list uh, each obstacle can be obstacle course can have uh, the obstacle itself so the least value it can be one and then this LIS array now here we are checking the upper bound this is nothing but a binary search that we are finding uh, the height greater than the current obstacle see you guys have uh, I assume that you guys have the idea of upper bound and lower bound so let me explain you this also see upper bound will give you the answer so if you are finding an upper bound for let's say x and element x so upper bound will give the pointer to a first first occurrence greater than x it will give you pointer to the first occurrence greater than x and if you're finding lower bound then it will give pointer to first occurrence with a value uh, equal equal to uh, greater than or equal to x it will give first occurrence uh, of the value greater than equal to x and it will be strictly greater than x right so if you have added like this one two three three five and if you find upper bound of three zero one two three four so it will result in four that is the fourth index and if you find lower bound of three then it will result two so uh, that will be greater than equal to three greater than equal to x element so that is at index two so guys understood what is upper bound and lower bound and yeah here we want the index of the first element with a height greater than the current obstacle height so yeah we use upper bound and then the if condition if the insert index to insert that means uh, there are no uh, that is equal to ls dot size that means uh, this upper bound has resulted into the uh, into the last pointer okay that means there are no such obstacles inside the ls array with a height greater than the current uh, obstacle and in that case what we did is we simply insert the obstacle right and the as condition we replace we are performing this to these two things either to append at the end or to replace so yeah we append at the end or we replace and, uh, and for the answer we update the answer is nothing but the index at which we updated uh, or inserted plus one right because the index is thus this is the zeroth index so yeah we have to add one and at the end we return the answer so guys the coding part is very much simple and the time complexity here is nothing but we go off and log in because this upper bound will take log in time complexity and we are applying upper bound and time so over the time complexity is n log in and the space complexity here is big of n as we are using this LIS array to store our answer right to store uh, our answer in our intermediate steps right say we cannot consider this answer as our space complexity because we have to return that but since LIS, we are using it in the intermediate steps to perform the calculation. So we have to consider it inside our space complexity. So yeah, guys, that's all for this question. I hope you guys have understood that what we are actually doing here. We were actually performing the LIS for each index. Then how we can perform that intuitively. I know that building this intuition to perform this LIS intuitively is very much difficult. But once you have uh, go seen the approach of this question, then afterwards for all other future LIS question would be very much simple. You would be able to perform LIS in big O of n log n time complexity, right? So this is one, uh, you can say a unique type of question where we have to perform LIS in n log n time complexity. And once you have understood this question, then now you can perform similar questions easily. So yeah guys, that's all for this video. If you guys have still any doubts, then do let me know in the comment section. Make sure you like the video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.